Hey guys, Brian Pangolinan, uh, Sabre Jiu Jitsu owner here in Concord, California. And we've been talking about um, the belts as of late. And we started with the white belt and what, what it means to be that and the growth process from that. And then we talked about the blue and all that, all that the uh, blue belt entails. But now we're going to talk about the purple belt. And in my opinion, from my, uh, my prior history of learning and understanding of the belts and my own personal uh, experience, it's the hardest one to get and it's the hardest one to figure out. And um, a lot of my students have realized that even, even as of late. Um, and I tell that to them all the time. Um, when you get the, to the tail end of your blue belt, you kind of know it. Whether you're a competitor or not, uh, you'll feel your techniques really start to advance and flow more. And you start to explore more at, at the end of your blue belt. And once you start to find yourself even submitting and beating or giving other upper belts a hard time, it's time to move on. And I'm sure, uh, at least you know, in my, my opinion, from where I'm at, uh, your instructors will see that. Um, how I do it, I like to give that blue belt, even though I know they're, they're at the end of their blue belt, just a little bit of growth room still. So he or she may not feel ready so much to get the purple, but I kind of see it as like, when you max out at a certain belt and there's nothing left to do, even if you are a competitor, it is time to move on. And, you know, that's always kind of been a, a debate in, uh, over the years from some of these places that hold a student at a certain belt for so long. And, and it's almost like they're kind of sandbagging. Who knows? But anyway, um, it's always to the, to the instructor's discretion. And, and in my case, I like to see it as, once you've got the purple, here you are. It's it's a professional belt. You you are actually able to be an instructor for adults, and your skill set is good enough to teach adults. Not to mention, and I've seen it before, like a really good purple belt can beat a black belt. It's happened many times. But also, there's that line of responsibility as far as maturity, and that's where, although your skill set may start to grow and expand and beat other people, can you mentally and, phys and emotionally handle the belt? Um, and I see that a lot, not necessarily just with competitors, but also on the mat day to day. Um, and when a purple belt gets their new belt, they'll, they'll, you can see that they're carrying that more responsibility on their shoulders. And some can handle it and some cannot. But, and that's the, also the difference between the blue and the purple, the ability to handle that type of uh, uh, responsibility. Um, on a tech, technical level, uh, the purple belt will flow their movements much better. They'll take everything they learned at white belt and blue belt, and all of a sudden it's really fused together to this nice flowing, flowing type of style, whether it be in the top or the bottom. And that's where you see those differences, those really fine differences between the good purple belt and the blue belt. Or even sometimes the newer purple belt and the blue belt. They're, they're chaining their movements to, together better. And also, they know how to go from bottom attacks to defense to top side attacks to defense and know how it just, it just keeps evolving. And it's really fun to watch really two good purple belts roll because it's like it's some of the best uh, uh, techniques that you can, you can watch unfold right in front of you. Um, and when I say also that it's the hardest one to figure out because that maturity level for a purple belt can be difficult. And I know I've done it here on my team to where I've looked at students like, all right, it's all in your hands now. And he or she will look at me and kind of not necessarily understand what I'm talking about, but they'll realize, wow, he's not holding our hand anymore, <laughs> you know? And it, it is like, it is definitely one of those type of you're an adult now and you can handle the responsibility to not be coddled so much or, or, or held uh, in a, in a certain regard because you're just this blue belt or not to take anything away from blue belts. Trust me to get your blue belt. That's a great accomplishment. It's a, it's a great, great, uh, um, piece in your whole journey. But if you were to view the belts on, uh, let's say an age level, the white belt is that, that infant level to toddler to somewhat of a small child. And then you get to the blue and then there's your, uh, adolescent teenager, <laughs> just really trying to figure life out and know that they have this great power in front of them. They starting to figure out and all of a sudden it just, 
they clicks and they get it or they go the opposite way and they really cower away and they can't handle it and that's when you see and that's why we mentioned before the blue belt blues very real but moving forward into the purple that purple belt will really start to adjust but that adjustment level they know they can no longer turn back or at least for the most part i've seen most guys get the purple and they don't want to go like quit or, or turn back they know they need to keep advancing and keep sharpening their tools and 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 I see that also to where folks get their purple belt and they get hungrier. Um, I remember when I got my purple belt, I was a purple belt for a year and it was hours and hours of training a day. Like I was literally in the academy twice a day, six to eight hours a day training and, and refining everything I was learning. And um, it was also relearning things that I ne didn't know or I needed to refine reverting back to white belt skills and blue belt skills like oh now i get it as a purple belt i'm gonna make this sharper because my body can understand the mechanics of, of the movements better but you know uh it's different for everyone it's different for everyone i've seen guys get that purple belt and it's just they, they click and it just like it was nothing and the responsibility motion uh, emotionally uh, mentally and physically they handle it real and they respond real well so you know uh, it's it's all on the person sometimes and um also in that process you got to look at it like you're in the middle of the line as far as the lineage of the, the basic belts white blue purple brown black right you're right in the center you're the middle child now <laughs> so there's even some bigger responsibility looked at you as a purple belt i know here in our academy we see purple belts and they're very regarded as and respected and I can look to any of our purple belts here in the, on the team and just kind of give them a look and they know what to do as far as taking control of, of a team for, let's say, even something simple as the warm-up. Um, it even goes without even asking. They'll know we're on it. We, we're on it. It's like that young, responsible adult. Now I can rely on you, he or she, to carry on whatever I need just in case I need assistance. And also, you, you see that growth of that student on the mat when they're paired up with that brand new student and, or that, the, that, you know, the lower belt that needs a little bit more help. I'll notice purple belts take a little bit more time and care when they're drilling with a, a, an underbelt student or a new student because they know. They know what it's like. They know exactly what it's like, and they don't have that chip on their shoulder anymore like they maybe had at blue belt. They have nothing more to prove, really, other than the fact that, hey, I made it this far to the middle of the line. I'm going to hold my ground, and I don't need to prove anything to anybody. Um, but also at the same time, just the opposite of that, when you roll with a purple belt, you feel like they're rolling with something to prove. You're like, wow, you're really good. And I, we have a lot of talented purple belts on the team, and I've seen them you know, in, in a lot of competitions, and you're just like, wow. This is the kind of growth that you see a student that you had at prior belts and all of a sudden they're just blossoming. Um, for example, one of our students, uh, she just had her, her actual real purple belt debut versus another purple um, last night. And all her mistakes that she used to make at white and blue were completely non-existent and then just gone in her performance last night. And it was just like all her chaining movements, where everything was there. Her submissions were just firing away and next thing you know she finished from the most basic basic position which was the cross collar choke from the from the closed guard which at a purple belt level that's pretty dang awesome and not to mention almost unexpected because this new era of jujitsu not too many people are looking for cross collar chokes from a closed guard situation but here on my team we definitely believe in fundamentals but that carried over from her white belt so never neglect those things you get from white and blue because you will grow even further into that if you take them with you into your purple belt level once your instructor feel like, feels like you're ready. Um, but once you get to the purple, take your time too. Don't feel rushed to do anything. Don't feel like you need to beat everybody because just, you're going to take your lumps just as anybody does at any belt. But that's where also that maturity level kicks in. You get subbed or, or you know, beaten or bested by somebody else in the room that day you'll sit up and smile like, ah, I'm gonna be better the next time. Anyway, hope that made sense and uh, hope that explains a little bit more about the uh, belts as we go along. Um, hope you're doing well, thanks.